one cosine in general this is what will happen okay Bilkul. so if you have only discrete number of waves ki aap sirf 3x le le 4x le 5x le ke agar ye 10 hai ye 11 hai ye 12 hai tab you hoga ki yahan pe constructive hogi yahan pe destructive but again yahan pe you hoga but if you take numbers like 10 10.5 11 then you are not restricted to integer then you can add different wave numbers who cancel everywhere except in this region इसलिए कि you need to cancel at more and more places ठीक है आप इससे शुरू करें so this is let's say your starting wave you want to cancel out its spot अगर मैं इसके अंदर इसको ऐड करूं I cancel it let's say at the here and here if I want to cancel here and let's say here I have to add more waves if I want to cancel here and here I will have to add more and more waves if I want to cancel at a lot of places so it means we need more and more case. Amplitude profile doesn't matter much for what we are discussing. Bilkul, it's a similar phase. These wave are they are plane waves. ठीक है? ये individually तो किसी चीज की नहीं है, लेकिन जो combined wave है, that is of some particle which is confined in a certain region. So, ये जो चीज़ है, ये mathematical property है wave की। आप, it doesn't matter you are working in quantum mechanics or anywhere, whenever you have a wave which is localized in a plane, this can be made by adding lot of plane waves together. और point ये है कि more you want to cancel out, more case you need। और ये जो चीज़ है, ये सब में it was known starting from about 1700 and that's what four years, eight years, four year cross form and four year uh, series. So this thing was known even before quantum mechanics. And when quantum mechanics came in, uh, it was proposed by de Broglie's uh, wave hypothesis. Then Schrodinger gave the wave equation that you find wave function from here, which we will study. Quickly, Heisenberg was the one to realize this thing that we cannot determine the properties of particles uh, with that certainty that we used to do in classical mechanics. Because if we want to determine its position in space, so he he said that, and actually he didn't propose that this is the property of wave anyway, it doesn't matter. As soon as it became apparent that particles are represented by wave, and a particle in a confined space has to be represented by a wave, which is sum of many more waves with different case. It means that when you have your knowledge of uh, x within a, uh, a distance delta x, your knowledge of k will spread. For a free particle, this time k pata tha, we didn't know its position. And for a particle whose position we know, we now have an uncertainty in k. And he gave this relation right away that Yes, so we will go there. So, ये जो मैंने kx लिखा है, ये just to emphasize कि this is a wave number along x-axis. क्योंकि in general there can be three axes, x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. So a particle can find in three dimension would have three relation like this. But for x-axis, this is a relation. And actually, to prove this relation, you don't even have to know quantum mechanics. This relation was already there. This is a relation valid for a, a wave packet which has a relation between its x domain and a relation between its k domain in such a way that this is this is minimum and this is minimum. And this is a, by the way for a Gaussian wave packet, but we won't be proving that. So all other waves which are not Gaussian, they actually are always greater than half. So ठीक है मैं अब आप जो है इसको रीकैप करता हूँ यहाँ से शुरू करते हैं ओके लेट्स बिगिन फ्रॉम बिगिन बिकॉज़ दिस इज़ सो इम्पोर्टेंट और 
आपका ये जो ट्यूटोरियल है और जो रेसिटेशन है इस वीक की और एग्जाम इट्स गोइंग टू फीचर लॉट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम ऑन सर्टिफिकेट प्रिंसिपल सो दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज दिस इज एक्चुअली रियली एट दार्ट ऑफ क्वांटम मिकैन सो लेट्स डू इट अगेन तो आप में से काफी लोग सवाल करते हैं में क्या है तो आंसर है कि जो होमवर्क है उसमें जो नोट लिखा है वो पढ़ लिया Yeah, there are four things only which are going to be covered, and the statement is there. Okay, so let me begin from a free particle. So a free particle has a wave which is continuing from minus infinity and going to plus infinity in x and in time. So there is a corresponding wave in time. So this is psi of p. You can say actually yes. Let's say at p x zero, and let's say you have a psi x at p zero. So this is a free particle. Bit will move, sir. Okay. But so now you see, this this wave function that we have written in the structure of the wave, it has a fine, a definite energy. Because it has a definite omega, and it has a definite momentum because it has a definite wave number. Or, but its position, we have not known. So, this mathematically, this is valid for only a particle which exists at this point from the creation of time and which is going to be here until the end of the time, and. Which can be anywhere from one edge of the universe to the other edge of the universe. So that relationship, actually, let me write it again. This is only valid for a free particle, and a truly free particle is the one that I just described. So it means it can be found anywhere at any time, and it has a constant probability. You can check. If I find its probability, find it. This is a constant number. And it's independent of x and t, so it has to exist for all time and in all space. अब जहाँ रख पार्टिकल का असर ही इसका मतलब है कि जो प्लेन वेव है या ये पार्टिकल जिसकी हम बात करते हैं कि इसकी एनर्जी इतनी है और मोमेंटम इतना है, it only exists in our fantasy and in our dreams. It doesn't really exist. Free particle. But why we use it? क्योंकि बहुत सारी प्रैक्टिकल सिचुएशन में भी जो पार्टिकल है इट कैन ऑलमोस्ट बी अज्यूम लाइक अ फ्री पार्टिकल फॉर एग्जांपल दिस फोटॉन व्हिच इज कमिंग आउट ऑफ दिस लाइट इट्स नॉट फ्री अराउंड द टाइम व्हेन इट इज कमिंग आउट एंड व्हेन इट इज टू नियर टू द लाइट बट वंस इट इज समवेयर हियर इट्स ऑलमोस्ट लाइक अ फ्री पार्टिकल अ पार्टिकल व्हिच एग्जिस्ट एनीवेयर एंड फॉर ऑल टाइम Yes, so if you take all those things into account, then it's not a free particle. You have to write a more complicated function. It can't. Because we can't have a particle which is there, uh, which can be anywhere from one end of the universe to the other and for all time. Okay, so let me please continue because the time is running out. So this is for free particle. And we know that for a confined particle, this has to be a wave function like this, which exists in a finite region of space, let's say in delta x, and this can only be made if we add a lot of these plane waves. For example, uh, I can add, let's say, one wave with k1, one wave with another wave number and then another wave number and when we all add them up we get this and mathematically I can represent it in a space in this you can say in a k axis that I use this wave with let's say wave number 2 with wave number 2.1 with wave number 1.9 and so on so I put a point at let's say 2, at 2.1, at 1.9, and so on. So in general, we need a lot of these cases. So it means that momentum now has a spread k, 
it's the amplitude of these waves. So this you can roughly say is, is the amplitude. But you see, this doesn't matter. What I'm interested right now is that I need to add a lot of phase. And it turns out in wave mechanics that if you want to confine something in a smaller region, you have to add many more waves with different case, which means this delta k would get longer. And the basic relation is given by this. This is a minimum. You can get delta x, delta kx downward only to half. And, for, and this is only true for a Gaussian type wave that you have a Gaussian distribution in x, so you get a Gaussian distribution in k, so this is true, equality is true for that. For all general things, this is inequality holds. Ab istra, ab ke, this is not only for x, the same thing applies in time. So in time, we have this delta t and delta omega that they have to be greater than half. Ab ye kab ho sakta? Abhi imagine kare, uh, kahi pe koi reaction huye, thik hai? Or a particle create huye. Wo particle do fly karta ja raha, aur kuch time ke baad wo decay hoge. Thik hai? Is tarah koi aur particle hai, it, so the particle starts at a finite time, and then ends at a finite time. So iska wave function kis tarah ka hoga? So its wave function in time has to be like this. That there was nothing, suddenly the particle was created and then after a while the particle was gone. It decayed, it converted to some other particles which have other wave function, but for this particle it began and it ended. So it has a lifetime or you can say an uncertainty or a spread in time delta t, which means that its energy, uh, I'm sorry, it's, if, you if you want to construct this function, using different uh, frequencies in time. So different frequencies will have a spread delta omega, right? So same thing as for k. So you need to add lot of plane waves in omega to construct this type of wave function, which cancels in this part and that part. So the same relation holds for delta t and omega. By the way, you can write it in a different way. अगर इसको दोनों तरफ h कार्ड से मल्टीप्लाई कर दें, तो ये क्या बन जाएगा? h कार्ड से, तो h कार्ड, h बार, so that, so this becomes h बार डेल्टा के x, h बार बाय टू, so इसका नाम h बार भी है और h कार्ड भी है, so this is delta p x, so you can also write it as delta x, delta p x. Similarly, if you multiply this one with h bar here, h bar here, this becomes delta p, delta e, like this. This is really, the first thing is, this is usually the shape, but this is not necessary. Exactly. No, no. Different color. Yes. So, अगर हम किसी फोटोन को एक स्मॉल उसमें कन्वर्ट स्मॉल रीजन का कह रहे हैं या टाइम में नहीं अगर तो स्मॉल रीजन में करते हैं सो व्हाट ही सेइंग दैट इफ वी हैव अ फोटोन लाइन कमिंग लाइक दिस एंड देन आई कैन सर्व अ बॉल विद विद डेल्टा एक्स सो दैट व्हेन द फोटोन्स हियर I know by certainty that they are confined in this region. So it means that once they are going here, so if this is the x-axis and this is let's say y-axis, so when they are coming from here, they are going along y-axis. But by putting this slit, single slit of width delta x, we have confined them in this region, which means that momentum in this direction delta 
Px has to be greater than now h cut by 2 delta x, right? And that is the case. That's why if I put a screen here, okay, and I observe the photons that are going there, they don't all go in this region. They actually go like this. They have their phone everywhere. A lot of them are found here. But some of them are found here, some of them are found here, simply because there is no an uncertainty in the momentum in this direction. So by the time light reaches here, let's say we have a lot of photons here. ठीक है? उनमें से कुछ चार पांच सौ फोटोन सीधे चले जाएंगे, और maybe कुछ जो हैं दो चार उनकी जो velocity structure में मिल जाएगी, because of uncertainty, okay? So they will end up here, and some of them will have a velocity in this direction, they will end up here. So we have a scratch. And uncertainty principle says, if I reduce this slit width, the spectrum has to be broadened. And that is actually what you see whenever you perform an experiment with single slit. If you uh, make the slit narrower, the, the spot here gets bigger, doesn't get smaller. And actually, if you start, if you, if you start an experiment with a bigger slit, you have a very wide slit, then the spot is almost the same. And as soon as you begin to compress it, then after a while the spot gets to get better. Okay, so uh, this is uh, part of the confusion that arises when we mix two directions. So the photons here, they have a momentum, but that momentum is along this direction, which is h cut k or h over lambda. Okay, so this is a definite momentum. Okay, but and since they are coming here, there is no slit, so there is no uncertainty in this direction. Okay, and there is no uncertainty, so the particles are not moving in this direction as well. Once they are here, they are still moving, so their Py is almost this, but now because of confining in this region, their uncertainty in momentum comes in. And because of uncertainty in momentum, there is an uncertainty in its velocity. So before this, there is no uncertainty in velocity in this direction, but as soon as photon passes from here, there is an uncertainty in velocity. Uncertainty in velocity means that if I may have the velocity of all the photons here, I will get a spectrum like this. So this is uh, Vx, the velocity in this direction. There would be photon having this velocity, but now they will have a little bit different velocity as well. So because of this, most of the photons have this velocity, so they will continue going like this. But some photons which have uh, a velocity in this or that direction, they will end up like this. Now, the, the point that you are trying to make of different wavelengths, that's true, but that's not true in this case. That will be true if you want to, if you are able to confine photons in time. That a photon, so time is passing, there's no photon, no photon, but at one point, light is emitted. So a photon exists only for a short time, and then it's absorbed. So in that case, there's going to be an uncertainty in its energy, which means there's going to be an uncertainty in its wavelength. Okay, and that does give rise, uh, 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 give rise to different colors. So this is one of one problem in your recitation and quizzes this week. So let me uh, just answer. So in the first question, so whenever you have uncertainty time, there is always going to be an uncertainty in energy, and that uncertainty will always give rise to uh, different wavelengths. For example, अपने ये चीज़ शायद पढ़ी होगी. Uh, a very naive and uh, basic model of an atom which was proposed initially was this that the electrons are going in uh, planets like orbits and when they jump from this to this by Bohr that the light of a certain wavelength gets some. So aapko kya expect karna chahiye? Aapko ye expect karna chahiye? If you plot the wavelength spectrum, you should get just a line. Like in the experiment, karte, you never get a line. You always get like this. Why this line 
is not short but has a little bit that you don't get one wavelength, you get a, a slightly uh, broad wavelength spectrum. So I'm not going to discuss the model. Model is wrong. We don't know that, roughly, uh, coarsely speaking. But in some sense, it is still So you can explain this thing by this fact. We know when we excite an atom, it has a certain lifetime. And after that lifetime, it decays. And when it will decay is not known, but if you prepare a million atom, you can be sure that maybe after one microsecond, half of them will have decayed. But maybe uh, some of them will decay right away. Some of them will take even more than one microsecond. Each state has a lifetime. So because of that uncertainty in time, there's an uncertainty in the energy which gets out of this. And once you put this lifetime here, and this E is nothing but HF, right? Yeah, it's not coming to the like there's no match over two pi. So, you know, so there's a finite width delta f or delta lambda. You can find delta lambda from here. So, so there's a finite width of the line. But actually, not only this, after books on birthday, hai, electron DT mass, thermal DT mass, and we have a problems with this. I have a pi mizan ki mass, but I have. Yeah, uh, want the mass uh, they have. Now, these masses are actually they have a very uh, fair amount of uncertainty in them. Why? Because all these particles have a very short lifetime. Muon is created for about a couple of microseconds. Mesons are created and even less than that. So it means that because of that, again, I this sense of So there is a particle which exists only for a brief period of time. So this is a wave function as a function of time. So this particle has to push time to exist. It means that its energy hai, that must follow this Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Or uh, roughly speaking, if I want to compute mass, I can replace this E with mc square. And c square is constant. So Conservation of energy to hai. The energy has a spectrum and actually the thing which it is coming from, the, the same uncertainty is there. The conservation to hai. So actually this is a really good question. And this, there is a whole range of discussion based uh, for energy conservation principle based on exactly an uncertainty principle. And that is that energy conservation, which we take for granted, is actually only through macroscopical. And yes, and for quantum system, we can only be certain of energy conservation <coughs> within the limit of an uncertainty principle. And you're absolutely right. The energy conservation principle is quite everything. Yes, please. So there are two uncertainties. One uncertainty is that we are doing in the experiments. You have done an experiment with You compute an uncertainty and that is proportional to your instrument. If you do instruments better, the measurement method better, you can reduce that uncertainty. That is the experimental uncertainty or the observer effect. So there is an observer effect and there is this basic Heisenberg principle which is there regardless of the observer. Because this doesn't come from observation, this comes from the simple fact that particles are made of waves and to have a particle confined in a space, I need a wave packet which is made up of several plane waves and each plane wave has a different wave number which means that whenever I have a confined particle, there are more than one wave number and then the uh, uh, width of those wave number, let's say you need 
from 10 to 13 wave number. So the uncertainty in wave number is 3. So that product has to follow this, un uh, this relation. So this thing is coming not from observation, but from the very nature of the thing, which is the wave particle duality. And actually, uh, I'm sorry, I'll take your question later. So this thing, this week and the next week tutorial and presentation, you will see about seven to eight problem giving you the consequences of one certain principle in different situation. For example, why does the hydrogen atom has a certain size? Or why can't uh, uh, why can't a particle confined, let's say, in a space be at rest? For a particle to be at rest, its momentum has to be zero. But we know now that for a particle to be confined, its momentum cannot be zero. Because its momentum is inversely, the uncertainty in momentum is inversely proportional to delta x. So that's why a, an electron in an atom, it can be at rest. So it can be at rest in, in the, the statement which assumes that it's a particle which has a definite velocity and blah, blah, blah. But you know that's not true right now. I'll take your question later. Let me just uh, do one more thing. And Physical significance. Sorry. Okay, so physical significance is what is the origin? What's the origin? So origin is the wave nature. Okay? Origin is the origin. Now we think about the uncertain relation to origin concept of origin. Okay, so let me repeat it. आप लोग ये समझते हैं कि for a free particle we have a definite wave number and a definite frequency. और दूसरी चीज अब unfortunately हमारा mathematics इतना strong नहीं है otherwise I would have shown you that if I take a Fourier transform of a confined function doesn't matter कि wave function है या कुछ भी है it has a finite uh, it has a it has a function in k which has a finite weight. I try to motivate you from this fact that to get something which is zero non-zero in some region and zero in another region, I have to add two waves of different k's so that they cancel at other points. So if you ye roughly some ke wave function is a confined particle ka, to iske corresponding to momentum hai, ke wave number hai, wo ek nahi balke do hai. और अगर आप ज़्यादा प्रिसाइड होना चाहते हैं कि ये थ्रू और हर जगह पे कैंसल करें इधर और सर फिर नॉन जीरो हो तो आपको काफी सारे केस ऐड करने पड़ते हैं के ऐड करने का मतलब है आपको वेव्स ऐड करने पड़ते हैं जिनके डिफरेंट केस हैं सो बिकॉज़ ऑफ़ दिस व्हेन अगर वी हैव अ कंफाइनमेंट इन एक्स वी and because uh, uh, x ke multiply kar de, x pe laga de, jo constant hai, uh, x cut ke laga de, x, ya x bar so this momentum and this cut so you can write it in this way so this is the same thing that you need more waves to represent a confined particle okay here see this one so this one we multiply both sides with edge cut from edge cut या आपको समझ में आ गई दोनों तरफ में एच कार्ड समझ लीजिए क्यों एच कार्ड इसके साथ लगा दो एंड दिस इज मोमेंटम अलांग एक्स एक्सिस तो वी गेट दैट तो अब देखिए यहाँ पे कैसे आएं ये एक्सेप्ट नंबर तो हमने निकाल दिया ठीक है लेकिन हमें ये तो आइडिया हो गया ना कि टू हैव अ डेल्टा एक्स वी नीड अस The uncertainty in position. Okay? This is a probability wave. This wave hai, you can observe it. You only observe the particle. You find the particle. And the wave is what it is. Particle is the probability. When you take the amplitude square, you get, a pro, you get a function which tells you the probability of finding that particle.
दैट इज फॉर फ्री पार्टिकल वो तो उसकी ये तो नहीं बता रहा कि आपको पार्टिकल यहाँ पे मिलेगा यहाँ पे मिलेगा तो ये बता रहा है कि जो सोशियल वेव की वेव है वो कितनी होगी नहीं वेव तो है लेकिन वो हमें वेव मिलती तो नहीं वी डोंट फाइंड द वेव वी फाइंड द पार्टिकल वेव फाइंड करेंगे पार्टिकल फाइंड करेंगे प्रॉब्लम तो जो वेव उससे भी बताई है डीप्रो गाइडेड वो वेव हम फाइंड नहीं करते वी ऑलवेज फाइंड द पार्टिकल लेकिन पार्टिकल कहां पे होगा इट्स गिवन बाय द एसोसिएटेड वेव ये है कि कितने वेव नंबर को हमें चाहिए उस वेव फंक्शन को बनाने के लिए जो कि डेल्टा एक्स के अंदर कंफाइंड है बिल्कुल ये फिर इसी तरह टेक्नोलॉजी से ये भी बिल्ड कर सकते हैं टाइम में और फ्रीक्वेंसी ये बल ये एग्जैक्टली वैसे कि आप अगर टाइम में आपको कंफाइंड फंक्शन चाहिए तो आप उसी तरह से टाइम के अंदर वेव ऐड करेंगे ठीक है तो यूनिक डिफरेंट फ्रीक्वेंसी तो इट्स सेम थिंग टाइम एंड स्पेस बायोलॉजी यू कैन वाइड कहां पे होने की क्या प्रॉब्लम सो वेव आप कह रहे हैं ये वेव नहीं क्यों कह रहे हैं कि ये वेव है क्योंकि आपको डबल स्क्रीन करके तो डायफ्रेक्शन मिलेगी लेकिन वो तो इलेक्ट्रॉन रखे तो उससे भी मिलती है फोटो बना एक्चुअली हम वेव नेचर ये बहुत सारी बहुत टाइम तक भी और क्योंकि हम जमीन वेव बट क्योंकि फोर्ट जो है वो बहुत सारे होते हैं उनकी एनर्जी टेन पॉइंट माइनस नाइनटीन जो है वेन वी ऑब्जर्व देर ऑब्जॉर्व बाई एट दैट्स हाउ वी ऑब्जर्व द फोर्ट ऑन डिटेक्टर के अंदर जो सिलिकॉन के दूसरे आइटम्स हैं दे ऑब्जॉर्व दो फोर्ट ऑन कन्वर्ट दैम इन टू करंट एंड दैट्स हाउ वी ऑब्जर्व ओके सो लेट मी ही कैप दिस फॉर ओके सो लेट्स डू दिस थिंग यार आप से बहुत सवाल हो इनको लोगों को मौका मिलना चाहिए जी आप अच्छा मैं आपको लेट्स ट्राई टू डिस्कस द कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस ऑफ द अनसर्टेन प्रिंसिपल Let's do number one. That why do we get a finite width of the light that we get out of the atom instead of just getting one wavelength? The reason is this: that we get light out of atom because when we excite an atom, it remains there for a while and then it decays. So it means there's an uncertainty in time for this excited state, which means. That there is an uncertainty in the energy of the photon that is emitted. Because when when we excite the photon, the photon can get out right away, or it can get out in let's say uh, one part microsecond or two microsecond. And further, each microsecond, it decays. So it means that there is an uncertainty in time for this excited state, which means that there is an uncertainty in time for this excited state, which means that there is an uncertainty in time for this excited state, which means that there is an uncertainty in time for this excited state, which means that there is an uncertainty in time for this excited state. That the uncertainty in energy and this this sort of weight is relation. Or again, ये delta e को मैं hf रख दूँ. E is nothing but hf. H constant है तो delta से बाहर आ सकता है. So ये delta t भी इधर ले आए, h भी इधर ले आए. और ये h cut को मैंने h over two pi लिख दिया. So यहाँ से आप delta f निकाल सकते हैं. ठीक है? So यहाँ से आप जो frequency है उसमें uncertainty निकाल सकते हैं. यहां से आप वेवलेंथ का अनसर्टेनिटी निकाल सकते हैं इसी तरह अगर फर्स्ट कह रहे आप मैस मैयर करना चाह रहे हैं एक ऐसे पार्टिकल का विच एग्जिस्ट ओनली फॉर अ शॉर्ट टाइम फॉर लेट्स से फॉर अ टाइम डेल्टा टी सो देर वाज नो पार्टिकल द पार्टिकल थ्री वाज क्रिएटेड एंड देन आफ्टर वाइल द पार्टिकल वॉज गॉन और जितनी देर तक पार्टिकल रहा है देर इज एसोसिएटेड वेव फंक्शन राइट सो देट एसोसिएटेड वेव फंक्शन हैज दिस विथ डेल्टा टी So it means the energy of the particle and this delta T has to follow this. Or E is जो है since it is m c square, so this is delta T. 
delta m c square, this has to be greater than this, which means ye c square constant hai, to ye delta se bahar nahi kal sakta hai. So delta m has to be greater than 2 delta t c square. So this means that now you see that mass uncertainty is not a little bit. It's proportional to 1 over c square and of course the lifetime. So if any particle only exists for 1 nanosecond and the other one is a passive particle which is the lifetime of 1 microsecond. So the two of the mass uncertainty is the difference of 1000. So that's why when we observe a particle in NLC or other collider, it actually takes sometimes years to confirm that it really was a particle because you get a distribution of masses and other parameters and it takes time to verify that really this uncertainty and all these things fit with the data. Because of the time. It only exists for a short time. Because a particle is not a particle, it is not a particle, it is not a particle, it is not a and after some time, the particle decays into some other thing. So particle ka wave function time mein kya hoga? It will be zero before a certain time and zero after a certain time. So it has a finite width in time. Okay? So that gives rise to uncertainty in energy. Achha, single slit. Okay. Aapke almost sare speaking pieces pe base hai. So let me do it again. So you have a stream of particle which can be electrons, photons, neutrons, mesons, or whatever. So it means they have a definite, and since there are free particles as they are coming towards the slit, they have a definite momentum h cut k. And because, but this momentum, the important thing to remember is along this direction. When you put a slit here, and once the particle quote unquote pass through here, then we can be sure that the particles are confined in this direction. Let's say this is y, but this is x direction. So in this direction, they are confined in this case. Which means that now, after passing through this, they have an uncertainty in momentum delta px, which is actually equal to m delta px. This is delta n is for bilkul derivative of it's not d by dx or d by dt or just d to treat it, it's like the same treat. So, this is p, this is m vx, so m is, let's say, mass is constant, so you take m out of this delta. So, this delta px, now px is an uncertainty, which means there is an uncertainty in velocity. Velocity is an uncertainty, what does that mean? There are some particles that have come here, they have this component of velocity, some of them are zero, some of them are maybe one meter per second, some of them are minus two meter per second, कुछ का 10 मीटर पर सेकंड है, कुछ का 20 मीटर पर सेकंड स्ट्रक्चर में है, तो एस डी पार्टिकल का प्रोपोगेटिंग, जिनका जीरो है, वो तो सीधे इधर ही आ जाएंगे, जिनका 1 मीटर पर सेकंड स्ट्रक्चर में कंपोनेंट आ गया है, वो ऐसा ऐसा चलते इधर आ जाएंगे, कुछ का जो 10 मीटर पर सेकंड जिनमें यहाँ पे अंसर्टेनिटी � because this is equal to h cut over 2 delta x. To get delta x, delta p x, h cut over 2. Okay? So delta x, either are you going to reach it? Here, here. Delta p x, h cut over 2 delta x. So, what will be delta px? h cut over 2 delta x. Now, see. So, this means that when this particle will reach here, there is a spread. And the important thing is, that if you do narrow it, the spread is more. And you do this experiment with photons, with neutrons, with electrons, you get the same result. And here, what is the light wave nature? In fact, when this experiment started and when people realize this that when they have photon coming in, they don't know the photon, they say light is coming in and this single slit is diffract, okay, it's spreading. So they said, it must be a wave. Because if you have a water wave, if you have a narrow slit, it spreads. So from there, they will be confused. Because the photon is so low, 
और नॉर्मली एक्सपेरिमेंट जब लोग करते थे देर वॉज ट्रिलियन एंड ट्रिलियन एंड ट्रिलियन ऑफ फोर्ट ऑन दॉल टू ऑलमोस्ट गेट कंटिन्यूस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सो दैट्स वाई अंटिल नाइनटीन सेंचुरी पीपल थॉट दैट इज सब So this is another good question. Is that? So I'm going to tell the answer. Question is that if it's a four-ton, then how will the velocity of the satellite come? Because we know C is constant. Yeah. 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 ठीक है जब ये लाइट इधर को जा रही है तो इसका ये कंपोनेंट है सी वाई ये कंपोनेंट है सी एक्स वट इज कॉन्सेंट इज दी ये सी जो है ये सब के लिए सेम है लेकिन ये कंपोनेंट अब एक अब जैसे देखें यहां से लाइट निकल के कुछ फोटो इधर को जा रहे हैं कुछ फोटो इधर को जा रहे हैं कुछ फोटो इधर को जा रहे हैं सबका ये कंपोनेंट डिफरेंट है इस कंपोनेंट से राइट लेकिन मैग्नीट्यूड सब की सेम है स्लाइट स्लाइट भी लेकिन चूंकि वो जा सारे उधर ही नहीं है थोड़ा कोई जरा देर से पहुंचेगा जल्दी पहुंचेगा फर्क तो नहीं पड़ने लगा ना तो ये जो साहब है क्योंकि आप दोनों से क्वेश्चन काफी है मैथ्स में भी अनसर्टेनिटी तो ये कहते हैं मैथ्स में अनसर्टेनिटी क्यों नहीं हो सकती ये देखिए मैंने लिखा हुआ क्यों हो सकती है इसमें लेट्स बिगिन विद दिस थिंग के वी आर सर्टेन अबाउट मैथ्स लेकिन अगर हमें मैथ्स को भी आंसर देने का पता नहीं है देन इट्स वेरी इजी के इससे कर लेते हैं अगर आप ऐसी सिचुएशन में हैं के वेर दे बोथ हैव वन सर्टेनिटी देन यू यूज चेन रूल यू राइट लाइक दिस तो ये इंपॉर्टेंट है बहुत सारे रेसिपल कल दो साल पहले किसी ने मैं जब ये कोर्स पढ़ा था ऐसा सवाल नहीं किया था तो वी हैड प्रॉब्लम आई थिंक इन द मेटर जिसमें कुछ इस तरह की भी चीज थी और डंडा वी फाइन करना था लॉट ऑफ पीपल ऑफ कोर्स इट वाज माय फॉल्ट आई हैड टेल देम के इसको आप लिख सकते हैं टू पी डंडा पी तो पीपल वर कंफ्यूज हाउ टू ट्रीट दिस थिंग सो इस सर मैंने इसीलिए पहले बता दिया था ऑलवेज थिंक ऑफ दिस डेल्टा एज अ डिफरेंशियल एलिमेंट जब आप न्यूमेरिकल वर्क वगैरह चीजें कर रहे हैं तो जैसे डेरिवेटिव भी होता है ना ये टू पे आ गया टू पी और डी पी आता है ना तो डी पी की जगह पे डेल्टा पी आ गया हाँ नहीं मतलब तो फिजिकल तो मतलब है लेकिन मैथमेटिकली वेन यू आर वर्किंग दिस डेल्टा वर्क जस्ट लाइक अ डेरिवेटिव जी The physics of black hole. What is what is happening inside an event horizon? The physics is unknown yet. That's outside. So the Hawking radiation is uh, based on a model which tells us that uh, out of a black hole because of uh, uh, a certain thing which I don't know. The radiation in terms of massive particles are getting out on the on the like a jet. But the physics inside we we don't. Know. So at the end, let me show you a little video clip. Yes. Okay. लेकिन ये जो clip है sir.
So while we are setting up, uh, I have an announcement. So unfortunately, I have to leave uh, for the ICTP uh, tonight. So I'll be away until 24th. International Center for Theoretical Physics, there's a conference there. So the announcement is that uh, the recitations and tutorial and lectures, they will continue as it is and there will be a quiz in each recitation just we used to have. And uh, the uh, other co-instructors will be taking there and the, the next lecture on Tuesday is going to be by Dr. Sabi Anwar, uh, who is uh, a senior physics professor in our department. And you, I am sure that you will love his lecture because he's not only one of the finest physics teacher in Pakistan, but also in the world. And he has, if you look at YouTube lectures, there is a course from the past, and there is a course from the past. He, people from all over the uh, world, they, they see those lectures and get inspired and they contact and write very good accolades. So uh, his lecture will actually build on what we have uh, studied so far. So he will show you a few more exotic uh, applications of uncertainty principles and uh, quantum states. So this is a clip from uh, TEDx about uh, something which is uh, famously called Schrodinger's cat. Because so far, actually I couldn't find the time to discuss what is called an observer effect. So in Bohr interpretation, we saw that when we have a particle with a wave function, the particle can be anywhere, unless we make a measurement of the particle. So a plane wave or a free particle can be here or here or here. Before we make a measurement, we don't know where it is. And this actually is a strange thing if you think deeper uh, than that. And this will hopefully take you uh, to that point. Austrian physicist Erwin Schrödinger is one of the founders of quantum mechanics, but he's most famous for something he never actually did, a thought experiment involving a cat. He imagined taking a cat and placing it in a sealed box with a device that had a 50% chance of killing the cat in the next hour. At the end of that hour, he asked, what is the state of the cat? Common sense suggests that the cat is either alive or dead, but Schrodinger pointed out that according to quantum physics, at the instant before the box is opened, the cat is equal parts alive and dead at the same time. It's only when the box is opened that we see a single definite state. Until then, the cat is a blur of probability half one thing and half the other. This seems absurd, which was Schrodinger's point. He found quantum physics so philosophically disturbing that he abandoned the theory he had helped make and turned to writing about biology. As absurd as it may seem though, Schrodinger's cat is very real. In fact, it's essential. If it weren't possible for quantum objects to be in two states at once, the computer you're using to watch this couldn't exist. The quantum phenomenon of superposition is a consequence of the dual particle and wave nature of everything. In order for an object to have a wavelength, it must extend over some region of space, which means it occupies many positions at the same time. The wavelength of an object limited to a small region of space can't be perfectly defined, though, so it exists in many different wavelengths at the same time. We don't see these wave properties for everyday objects because the wavelength decreases as the momentum increases, and a cat is relatively big and heavy. If we took a single atom and blew it up to the size of the solar system, the wavelength of a cat running from a physicist would be as small as an atom within that solar system. That's far too small to detect, so we'll never see wave behavior from a cat. A tiny particle like an electron, though, can show dramatic evidence of its dual nature. If we shoot electrons, one at a time, at a set of two narrow slits cut in a barrier, each electron on the far side is detected at a single place at a specific instant, like a particle. But if you repeat this experiment many times, keeping track of all the individual detections, you'll see them trace out a pattern that's characteristic of wave behavior. A set of stripes, regions with many electrons separated by regions where there are none at all. Block one of the slits and the stripes go away. This shows that the pattern is a result of each electron going through both slits at the same time. 
A single electron isn't choosing to go left or right, but left and right simultaneously. This superposition of states also leads to modern technology. An electron near the nucleus of an atom exists in a spread out wave-like orbit. Bring two atoms close together, and the electrons don't need to choose just one atom, but are shared between them. This is how some chemical bonds form. An electron in a molecule isn't on just atom A or atom B, but A plus B. As you add more atoms, the electrons spread out more, shared between vast numbers of atoms at the same time. The electrons in a solid aren't bound to a particular atom, but shared among all of them, extending over a large range of space. This gigantic superposition of states determines the ways electrons move through the material, whether it's a conductor, or an insulator, or a semiconductor. Understanding how electrons are shared among atoms allows us to precisely control the properties of semiconductor materials like silicon. Combining different semiconductors in the right way allows us to make transistors on a tiny scale, millions on a single computer chip. Those chips and their spread out electrons power the computer you're using to watch this video. An old joke says that the internet exists to allow the sharing of cat videos. At a very deep level though, the internet owes its existence to an Austrian physicist and his imaginary cat.